There are different types of case design that you might use, single, multiple, etc. But let's go through those different types of case study that you might use now. So when we're designing case studies, you've got options. Is it a single case? A single in-depth case study may provide you with all the information you require. A case may represent the critical case, the exemplar, the one that really proves the rule. You may test theoretical propositions within the circumstances they're believed to hold true. Or you might be an extreme case or a unique case. As Siglo, I, I, I put the paper up. Uh, in, in the repository gives the example of a talking pig. Now, if, if you've got a talking pig, that's a pretty extreme case. You know, the classic is, is a reviewer looks at it and says, well, that's just interesting, but that's just one pig. Show me a few more talking pigs and I'll believe you that pigs can talk. A single case can be very powerful, particularly if you found a talking pig. Representative cases are the commonplace example of average experience. They represent what most people do. Representative cases are something I tended to work with. Longitudinal case is the same case examined at multiple points over time. One of my students has, at the time I'm recording this, recently finished a longitudinal case study uh, of a number of different businesses. And she's done that at three points in time over three years. So a single case uh, where we wrote a paper was ascribed to IO. This was the novel use of blockchain technology to identify uh, art pictures used online to uh, give their attribution to say who created them and ultimately to get payment for the artist. So the work was registered against a blockchain. The private key uh, address of that on the blockchain is held by the person who owns it. And basically what that does, is it provides them with a, a point of proof to say, look, at this point in time, I created that image and here's my proof. And that's unalterable. So we, we can then use intelligent image match, which uh, basically scans the internet looking for your picture. And where it's found, it gives the option to the owner to either ignore that use, request a license fee, or issue a takedown notice to the web page where it's hosted. That was a single case study. And this was pre-NFTs, it was really interesting work. Now let's consider embedded case design. We might find ourselves examining one case in context, but looking at multiple units of analysis within a single case. We call that an embedded case. It may be a single of multiple cases, and this is when it gets quite complicated. Uh, my PhD student is undertaking a single embedded case. Research seeks to understand how the digital entrepreneurial ecosystem affects the development of digital entrepreneurship from a multi-level perspective. So they're looking at the context is Saudi Arabia. The case is the digital entrepreneurial ecosystem. Uh, there are the identification of key factors, practices that affect digital entrepreneurs, determine globally best practice, regional best practice, and looking at similar Gulf states. And we're looking to provide policy advice to government, but to do that, we need insight from entrepreneurs, the organizers of the ecosystem, the government, people like um, those running uh, innovation centers will have insight into how do we support digital innovation in a country. So we've got this very macro level uh, policy advice that we're trying to move towards, but really we're, we're sort of looking at um, meso and micro level points for data collection. Multiple cases is where you follow a replication logic. So you're wanting to do multiple cases and show that the same thing perhaps happens. Uh, you may find theoretical repetition, or you may look for similar or extreme cases to show that, well, in this extreme case, something still holds, or maybe it breaks. Differences are likely between cases. The stronger evidence is if your hypothesis is proven in multiple cases. So you think, you know, the reason A goes to B is explained by a certain thing and you show that happens in many different case studies. And that expands the generalizability, particularly if you take cases from different industries. 
uh, multiple cases also makes analysis and theoretical development easier because you can compare and contrast different cases in different contexts. And then patterns may appear obvious in one case, but when you put multiple cases together, you may realize something more subtle is going on. A less obvious pattern may emerge. So the paper hopefully uh, you, you've read, which is um, blockchain case studies in supply chain visibility. We did multiple case studies of the use of blockchain to provide visibility in supply chains. Why? Because customers are demanding evidence of product provenance, that's the history of the product. And you can use blockchain and tags on, on goods to trace where something came from and show where it is. We used four blockchain cases, uh, World Wildlife Fund Transceivable for fish, Agridata for grain, Dementa for wine, and TechRock for baby food. All of this was linked to data in a blockchain so you could see where a product had come from and see its history.